Hi, I'm Mike, Poketips Mike, and today I'm going to teach you how to EV train in Pokemon Sword and Shield. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about EV training. First, what EVs are, then what you need to EV train, and last but certainly not least, three different methods and locations you can use to EV train your Pokemon in Sword and Shield. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So EVs stand for Effort Values, which are a semi-hidden stat in the game that makes your Pokémon stronger. In-game, they're referred to as Base Points, however fans have been calling them EVs for over a decade, so when people talk about these, they usually use the term EVs. Now, your Pokémon actually gets these EVs every time it gains experience points from capturing or defeating a Pokémon in battle, whether it participated in the battle or gained experience from the experience share. Now, just like EXP, every Pokémon gives out EVs, and depending on the Pokémon, they give EVs in different stats. So, for example, a Galarian Zigzagoon gives you one Speed EV, and a Squovet gives you one HP EV. There are even some Pokémon that give you more than one EV in a stat at a time, but that's a little complicated for now. Every four EVs you get will be equivalent to one full stat point by the time your Pokémon hits level 100. However, there are limits on the amount of EVs that you could get, otherwise every Pokémon would have 999 in all of its stats. So a Pokémon can only have a maximum of 510 EVs in total, with a maximum of 252 EVs in each stat. So for example, this is what an average spread for a fully EV trained Pokémon would look like. 252 points in one stat, 252 points in a second stat, and then finally 6 in a third stat to round off at an even 510 and maximize your Pokémon's potential. So for a more visual example, let's compare these two Raichu. First, we have a level 100 Raichu that has not been EV trained at all. Take a look at its special attack, its speed, and its HP. Now this is the same exact Raichu here, but we EV trained it in special attack and speed, and put the last 6 points into its HP. Now when you take a look at these two, you can clearly see the one that's been EV trained has much higher stats, which is very important if you want to have the strongest Pokémon possible. So now that we know what EVs are, what do we need to EV train? Before you get started EV training, you're going to want to make sure the Pokémon you're going to train doesn't have EVs already. Like I said earlier, every time the Pokémon gains EXP from a trainer's Pokémon or wild Pokémon, it also gains EVs. So if you want to EV train your starter Cinderace that you leveled all the way up to 57, you're going to need to reset its EVs first. Otherwise, you'll have EVs scattered all over its stats, and it definitely won't reach its max potential. Resetting EVs in Sword and Shield is simple, but time-consuming. In-game, there are six different berries. The Pomeg Berry for HP, Kelpsy for attack, Qualot for defense, Houndoo for special attack, Greppa for special defense, and Tomato Berry for your speed. Now, each one of them lowers a Pokémon's EVs by 10 points. Now, there's a few different berry trees in-game that will always give you these EV-reducing berries. Three of them are in the wild area. The tree in the Giant's Mirror area, the tree in the Hammerlock Hills area, and the tree in the Motostoke Riverbank. And there's also a tree on Route 7 that will always drop these berries as well. Now, there are also lots of other trees in the wild area that will also give you EV reducing berries, but they also have a chance of giving you the other just regular berries as well. I'll have a list of all berry trees in the game that you could check out in the description below. Once you've used enough berries, it'll say your base points can't go any lower, and you'll know that you're done using the berries and your Pokémon's EVs are down to zero. However, doing this can be a little time-consuming, so it might just be easier to start with a freshly bred or captured Pokémon, since those will always have zero EVs. So now that we know what we need, let's jump into our three different EV training methods. Now this first method is by far the easiest, but also the most expensive, and that is give your Pokémon vitamins. In Sword and Shield, there are six different vitamins. The HP up, which increases your HP, protein for attack, iron for defense, calcium for special attack, zinc for special defense, and carbose for speed. 
When you use these on your Pokemon, they'll instantly give your Pokemon 10 EVs in the stat. So to fully EV train a stat using just vitamins, you'll need to use 26 of the vitamin and it'll automatically bring that stat up to the maximum of 252 points. The only downside to this is getting these vitamins can be kind of expensive. You can buy them at the Pokemon Center in Winden, however, they're going to cost you 10,000 Poke Dollars each. Now, if you're looking for a way to get enough money to buy a lot of these vitamins fast, I'll have a link to my Sword and Shield money guide in the description of this video. If you follow that guide, you'll have enough money to buy hundreds of these in no time. The other way you can get vitamins is by going to the Pokemon Center in Hammerlock and talking to the BP shop lady in the corner. You can trade her two battle points for one vitamin. Using vitamins is definitely the fastest way to EV train your Pokemon, but the only problem is it's going to cost you 530,000 Poke Dollars if you just use vitamins to EV train your Pokemon, or 106 battle points per Pokemon, which again can be very costly. Now, method number two is the traditional EV training method, knocking out wild Pokemon to get your effort values. Now, this method is good because it's very cheap and also allows you to EV train multiple Pokemon at a time via the EXP share. By now, you definitely know that if you want to completely EV train a stat, it needs 252 points. Back in the old days, this meant that you might have to knock out the same Pokemon 252 times over and over and over again to maximize your EVs. However, the newer Pokemon games have a few items and mechanics that speed up that process tremendously. The first thing you'll want to get are the power items. Now, the power items are special items you could give to your Pokemon to hold, and when they're holding them, they'll give you 8 additional EVs for the stat every time you defeat a Pokemon. So let's say you're EV training your speed, and you're fighting against Zigzagoon. Normally, Zigzagoon only gives one speed EV, but if you give your Pokemon your EV training the Power Anklet item, it will give you 8 more speed EVs for a total of 9, essentially giving you the equivalent of knocking out 9 Zigzagoons in one battle. Now, just like everything else, there's six of these items and one of them for each stat. The Power Weight for HP, Power Bracer for Attack, Power Belt for Defense, Power Lens for Special Attack, Power Band for Special Defense, and Power Anklet for Speed. You can purchase all six of these items from the same Battle Point Lady I mentioned earlier in Hammerlock. Just keep in mind with the power items, only the Pokemon holding the item gets the benefit. So if you want to EV train more than one Pokemon at a time, they'll all need the right power item. Now the other way you can increase the amount of EVs that you get is by having your Pokemon be infected with the Pokerus virus. Pokerus is amazing for EV training. If your Pokemon is Pokerus, it doubles the amount of EVs that the Pokemon gets. So your Pokemon holding that power anklet that just knocked out the Zigzagoon. Instead of getting 9 speed EVs, it'll get 18 instead, which again, saves you so much time. Now the only problem here is Pokerus is extremely rare. You have a 1 in 21,845 chance of encountering a Pokemon with Pokerus in the wild, and from there, you still need to contract it. However, once you have Pokerus, it's extremely easy to spread. All you have to do is have the Pokemon with Pokerus in your party, go into a few battles, and after the battles are over, the Pokerus has a chance to spread to other Pokemon in your party. Before you know it, your whole party will be infected with Pokerus. So this, my friends, is where you come in. In all of my EV training guides, I suggest that if you have Pokerus, go into the comments section and trade it to somebody who doesn't have it. This way, everyone can have this amazing Pokemon virus, and you can make their EV training much faster, and also make their day. Now, doing some calculations here. Assuming your Pokemon is holding the correct power item, and is fighting a Pokemon that normally gives 1 EV, to completely EV train a stat, you'll need to knock out 28 of that Pokemon. And if you have Pokerus, you could cut that number in half, so you'll only need to knock out 14 Pokemon to completely EV train your stat. Not bad. Now with that being said, here are the locations that I recommend you use to EV train each stat. For HP, go to Route 1 and hunt Squovet. Squovet has a 50% chance of spawning in the overworld, so you'll find plenty of these with ease. For attack, go to Route 5 and knock out Stuffle. They have a 35% chance of spawning in the overworld. 
Also, if you're playing Pokemon Sword version, there's also a 5% chance of Farfetch showing up here. You could knock those out as well because they also give attack EVs. Now for your defense stats, go to Route 3 and go to this grass patch with Roly Coley. These things spawn like crazy here, so you'll have a very easy time EV training your defense stat. Now for the special attack stat, you could go to the Glimwood Tangle area and do random wild encounters. In the grass here, there's four different Pokemon that can give you special attack EVs. Morgrem, Hatrem, Sinistee, and Ndidi. Now just keep in mind if you're training on these, Morgrem, Hatrem, and Ndidi all give two special attack EVs instead of one. Sinistee only gives one, so you might need to adjust your calculations here. For special defense, go to Route 3 and hunt Gossiflor, which has a 30% spawn rate, and for speed, you could also go to Route 3 and hunt the Galarian Zigzagoon, which has a 38% spawn rate. Now, there might be some better spots to EV train, for example, the wild area can be really good, but that can change with the weather, and these spots are always consistent. If you know any better spots, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. So in summary, the traditional EV training is definitely much more affordable and works on multiple Pokemon at once, however, it can be time-consuming to knock out all those Pokemon. And last but not least, we have a third and new method, Pokejobs. Now, Pokejobs are newly introduced in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and can be another very cheap and easy way to EV train your Pokemon, although it is by far the slowest of the three methods. All you'll need to do is go to the Rotom PC in any Pokemon Center, and select the Jobs option. From there, you'll be able to select six jobs from the Hammerlock University that will give your Pokemon more EVs the longer that you leave them there. The names are pretty self-explanatory, so I don't think I need to explain them to you. Now, depending on how long you leave your Pokemon at the university, it'll get more EVs. If you leave it there for a little while, which is one hour, you'll get four points. If you select very short, that's two hours and you'll get eight points. Short is three hours and you'll get 12 points. Long is four hours and you'll get 16 points. Very long is eight hours and you'll get 32 points. Half day is 12 hours and you'll get 48 points. And whole day is 24 hours and you'll get 96 points when you come back to get your Pokemon. Now the cool thing is these EVs can be increased with both power items and Pokerus. The power items add 8 points per hour, and Pokerus will once again double the amount of EVs that you get in total. So let's say you want to EV train for speed. Give your Pokemon the power anklet, leave it there, and select full day. Come back one day later, and your Pokemon will be completely EV trained in speed. If you have Pokerus, leave it there for half of a day, and then it'll be completely EV trained for you. Now the cool thing about this method is you could train 10 Pokemon at once per stat, so if you really want to get crazy, you could do all 6 stats or EV train 60 Pokemon at once, although that would be very confusing. The only real downside about this method is it's time consuming, but it doesn't really require much else from you other than time. Another thing to keep note of here is if you decide to use the Poke Jobs, don't mess around with your Nintendo Switch's clock. If you start doing that, it's going to reset your Poke Job time back to the start. Now, once you're all done EV training, make sure you go to Hammerlock and go to this house right here, talk to this woman, and show her your completely EV trained Pokemon. And as a reward, she'll give that Pokemon an effort ribbon. And with that, my friends, you now know everything about EV training. What it is, what you need, and three different ways you could do it in Sword and Shield. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if it did help you out, please, please, please give this video a thumbs up. It took so long to research all this information, and even longer to script it out, test everything, and record it all. I wanted to make this guide as detailed and thorough as possible, so your thumbs up are greatly appreciated on this video. So my friends, thank you so much for watching the video, I really hope it helped you out, and I hope you have a great understanding of EV training now. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content, follow me on Instagram at PokeTipsMike, and my friends, I'll be seeing you in the next one.